Okay, let's start to look at creating some groups through the Group ID self service portal. Before we do that though, let's quickly go to the Group ID management console and look at the system configuration and the group life cycle options. What you'll notice here is that Group ID creates groups with a default expiration policy. Now that policy can either be never expire, to expire your groups every 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, every 6 months or every year. And that means that when a group has reached its expiration date, it will be expired and it will no longer be, be available. Now the default of course is to never expire. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose to expire my groups every 30 days. Now we do this so that when we create a group, it has an expiration day, and after that expiration day it's no longer visible, which means that we no longer have a global address list that is full of groups that, is, that are no longer used, that are no longer required, that are confusing people who may have incorrect members, and so on and so forth. So what we're doing is we're giving the administrator and the users more control of the life cycle and the life time of their groups and how they manage those groups. And what we're doing by doing this is we're stopping the concept of group glut within the global address list. This is good for administrators and it's extremely good for users. So what we'll do is we'll choose to expand the groups every 30 days. And what we're then going to do is we're going to say, well, where is that policy act actually active? So if we go to our Active Directory, I'm going to say that, that policy is active on the user created groups container, which is a container that I've created where I'm going to ask my, my users to, to all create their groups. You'll then notice lower down we have the concept of uh, notifications for group expiration, and by default we notify the owners of a group 30 days before the group expires, 7 days before it expires, and on the day before it expires. This means that the group owners have plenty of opportunity to renew the group should that be required. And the next option, delete expired groups on, automatically deletes a group which has been expired after the, the required number of days. This means that no, not only the groups removed from the global address list, but the groups are actually deleted from the directory, which further reduces the problem of group glut and leaves you with a much tidy directory once automatically managed. Okay, let's save that and let's go and create our group through the self service portal. Here we are at the group ID self service portal. Let's just log on. So we're going to create a new group and that group is going to use the defaults that we set up in the management console a minute ago. So if we go to the group section and create a new group and we choose to create our group in a container. We'll choose the user created groups container that I set up earlier. We'll create a group name. The group name pre-Windows 2000 is automatically populated. We'll email and enable our group and the alias is automatically populated, it can be modified of course. We'll confirm the group as being a distribution group. We'll confirm its scope as universal, although local and global are available. And we'll choose the security type to be private. The other options of course will be public, semi-public and semi-private. And we'll deal with these in a future video. By default, the group ID wants you to give a description for each of your groups. This assists with identifying groups at a later stage and it's always a good idea in Active Directory or the global address list to, to give your groups a description. So we'll do that here. This is a test group. We'll do as a good as a description here. Let's choose next. Members. 
by default you're made a member of your of your own group let's just add another user and we can add our users group contacts to to these to these groups so we'll choose another infant technology user here we'll choose Nick Stone it'll go away and we we'll choose search it'll find Nick Stone we'll add Nick Stone to the member list and here we see that Nick Stone is now a member of the group let's choose next again you'll see that the primary owner of the group is myself we can add additional owners if we, if we so require we don't need to do that in this case choose next to get to the summary the summary settings are, are displayed and uh, let's just submit this and let's create our group so there we are the, we've created a group called test group and if I now go to my groups I can see that I've created a group called test group description which we gave is this is a test group it says that I'm the owner and it gives us an expiration date now that expiration date is of course 30 days in advance of today's date because we set that the global the default expiration policy in the group ID management console earlier you'll notice that immediately the email address of the group isn't visible but if you just wait a few seconds for exchange to complete creation of the mailbox for the group and then refresh the screen the email address is visible and you can see here we set it to test group at group ID .local. if we then go to the my memberships tab you'll you'll see that we can confirm that we are a member of the group test group and if we select the options for test group you'll see that we have the, the standard set of attributes available to groups created by uh, exchange members member of uh, we're not a member of any of the group here of course delivery restrictions standard attributes these are the extended attributes within the active directory the email configuration of the group and other information that is available for a, sta for a standard distribution group if we just go back to the general tab here of course you'll see that the expiration policy for this group has been set according to the policy that we set earlier in the management console and we set this to expire every, every 30 days and it then confirms what the, the, what the expiration date is if you make any changes if we simply if we simply choose save if our group is going to expire we can simply choose to renew the group and that will expire for another period of the expiration policy we also have options to delete the group we have options to add it to your contacts and we have the option to send an email to the group as well so there you are that's the first group created within group id the self self-service portal and um, we'll do one or two more videos later to show you some some of the additional functionality and to go through the opt-in and opt-out and workflow phases and some other Group ID, new features. Thank you.